He worked on a senior research project in the art history department on Oscar <coughs> Niemeyer's buildings at Brasilia in the fall of his senior year. During this project, he became interested in the cathedral, specifically because it is distinctive from the other buildings in the city. The culmination of Barron's research on this topic was a paper entitled, The Flower Among the Rocks, Revisiting Oscar Niemeyer's Cathedral at Priscilla. In addition to his interest in art history, Barron just completed an honors thesis in the history department focusing on the Scottish press coverage of the American Civil War. Barron's talk tonight will focus on his research surrounding Oscar Niemeyer, who was a communist and an atheist, and his most successful building in the capital city, the cathedral. And though not traditionally Catholic in its design, the cathedral is a manifestation of Niemeyer's ideas of social justice and equality. All right. Um. Okay, uh, so thanks, Tommy. Uh, like Tommy said, I'm talking about Oscar Niemeyer. Um, Oscar Niemeyer, pictured here, uh, he's one of the most famous architects of the second half of the 20th century. Uh, he essentially defined Brazilian style from the moment he started designing things. The vast majority of his buildings are all over the country of Brazil. He also de designed a few things uh, in Paris as well. Uh, but he's incredibly controversial as well, in addition to being famous. Uh, most of his buildings are liked. Uh, sort of he has half, uh, half really positive reviews. He won the Pritzker Prize in 1988, which is one of the most prestigious prizes uh, for architecture. But sort of what I like about him, my favorite aspect, is that for as many positive reviews of his buildings, there are also as many negative uh, reviews. My favorite is an English author, actually. His name's Anthony Daniels. And uh, he wrote one where he described Oscar Niemeyer as being hellish uh, and said that if hell ever needed an architect, uh, Oscar Niemeyer would be his first choice. Uh, Oscar Niemeyer actually died. He was 104 years old last December. Uh, when he died, and uh, I hope Lucifer doesn't have any uh, renovation plans to call, uh, <laughs> call Oscar Niemeyer, because uh, I definitely love a lot of the stuff that he did. Um, so this is Brasilia. This is a postcard uh, from sometime in the 70s. Somebody has described it as a communist Disney world. Uh, Niemeyer designed almost all of this. Uh, the story of Brasilia is that uh, up until the 1950s, the majority of the population in Brazil was concentrated along the coast. Uh, in Rio, Sa Sao Paulo, et cetera. Uh, and the government for years had said we really need to take advantage of the resources on the interior of the country. We need to move people westward. And so they decided that they were going to draw a line down the center of the country, top to bottom, and then down the center of the country, uh, left to right. And the middle where they intersected is where they decided to build a new capital, uh, Brasilia. So probably 10 to 15 years before this picture was done, there was nothing there. Uh, this is completely artificial, and it was all done by Oscar Niemeyer. Uh, you can see the cathedral is that one right there. Uh, so the, oh, back up. So the majority of the buildings look sort of like this, uh, sort of Star Wars meets modernism, uh, straight lines, curves. They look better in black and white, which is why I gave you a couple of these photos. Uh, that's actually the, uh, the Congress building of Brazil right there, that ramp you can still walk right up it. Uh, like that, and those two domes are where the two houses of the Brazilian legislature meet. Uh, then this is the uh, executive building, essentially the president of Brazil's offices, and you can see the towers of the Congress behind that. Uh, that curve right there, that's a repeating pattern in Brasilia that you'll see inverted uh, when we look at the cathedral in a second. Uh, and then I included a color picture. This is from the mid-70s uh, to give you a little bit better of an idea, uh, and you can date it because the cathedral right there doesn't have uh, any of the stained glass in the roof yet. Uh, that is a highway actually running straight through the center of the city. Uh, so it's generally uh, a little bit unpopular uh, to be right there. So this is the cathedral. Uh, this is shortly after they finished it. Uh, it's meant to be sort of sculptural. You'll see a picture of Oscar Niemeyer with it uh, right in front of him. And this is what most of my research was focused on. Uh, you actually enter through that little ramp right there. It has the statues of the four evangelists letting you in, uh, and then these curves and the rest of it is glass. Uh, the cross was added a lot later. Incidentally, Niemeyer didn't want it to have any religious symbols on the outside. And uh, my personal favorite thing about the cathedral, and the reason that it was the, uh, the subject of my research, is that Oscar Niemeyer himself was an, was an atheist. Uh, and so everybody says, you know, oh, the best building he did is the cathedral, the best building is the cathedral, that's what his, uh, his legacy is based on, but it's a monument to a god that he didn't even believe in. Uh, and so that's sort of where I came in. Here's a picture of it today uh, from the outside. It looks more or less the same from every angle. Uh, and then this is the inside. 
and we'll get into talking about this a little bit later. Uh, a lot of people really don't like the outside. A lot of people have said it's uh, almost scary. Again, getting back to sort of Star Wars and uh, the, the sort of top scares some people. But the interior is spectacular, uh, and we'll get into why that is in just a second. Uh, and then you can see here, this is sort of the curve on the edge, uh, getting into the roof there. So where do I come in on this? Um, art history majors at BC are required to take this senior seminar. Uh, and the idea is it's about arts history theory and methodology. And generally what happens is you pick an artist, you read a lot about them, and then you figure out something that, they haven't that hasn't been said about that artist. You have to come up with something new. Uh, and so what I figured is, how did we get from this, this is the old cathedral in Rio, what uh, Niemeyer would have grown up with as the primary cathedral in Brazil, to this. Uh, this is a very recent photograph. Uh, and then how do you get from this, which is the interior, sort of gilded, uh, of a church in Brazil, to this? Uh, and I found the answer in this guy named Ernst Gombrich. Uh, he's an Austrian art historian. He wrote a book called Art and Illusion, in which he tries to answer the question of why does art change over time? Uh, so why are people in Egypt doing something differently than people in Greece at the same time period? Uh, why doesn't French art stay exactly the same throughout the entire history of France? Uh, Gombrich tried to answer that question along with a lot of people, but his framework works best for me. And his framework is called Schema and Correction. Uh, and I thought the best way to illustrate that was to do a little bit of artwork myself. Uh, so if you'll just uh, bear with me for a minute. Let's say you're a prehistoric cave person and someone tells you to draw a cat. Uh, it's possible that you're going to come up with something like that. It's a round face, orange cat. It's close enough. So this is our schema. This is our starting point. Then let's say someone else comes along five minutes later and says, well, I've seen this image, but I know that cats have pointy ears. And so they then draw this. That's the correction. And through this whole process, that's how you get change in art, according to Gombrich. So somebody sees this. This is the new schema. Says, I know that cats have whiskers. They would go ahead and add the whiskers. Uh, this happens over several hundred years. And you end up with that. <laughs> uh, pretty accurate depiction of a cat. Uh, the interesting thing with architecture, and the reason I'm particularly interested in architecture with this idea, is that there is no specific church that you can point to and say that's what they're trying to depict. Uh, so when you look at a cat, there is a physical cat. There's something that you're trying to become more accurate with. But with architecture, you really have to focus on the purpose of the building. You have to focus on how you're supposed to feel in the building. You have to focus on your own personal uh, design and sort of what you think it should be because there is no one perfect church that's going to be considered to everybody uh, exactly as it should be. So. I've divided up some of, uh, some of Niemeyer's thoughts. Obviously, my, uh, my last research on this was a little bit longer. So I divided his thoughts into three categories. Uh, we talked about his atheism. Then we're going to talk about his communism very briefly. And then we'll sort of make it larger to his greater world view uh, and talk about how the cathedral imp uh, is sort of impacted by all of those things. Uh, he was asked what he thinks about when he designs cathedrals. This was a reporter in the 80s uh, who asked him this. And he said, I think of the people who go there to pray those who believe in God. Uh, and then he also said, sharing is the most beautiful word there is. And to keep this precept close to one's heart is what God would want us to do if he existed. Uh, and so I think the cathedral is a lot about the individual experience, uh, but it's also about this sort of idea of sharing. Uh, and so this is, I mentioned the, uh, the sort of sculptural quality. There's an equality, uh, excuse me, the sculptural quality of the uh, building, there is a sort of equality about it in that it looks the same way no matter which direction you're looking at it. That's why it has the ramp. Uh, and then we'll see a little bit later that that sharing aspect, nothing in there is permanent. Uh, it can be shared amongst people of different beliefs uh, and how it became Catholic is a slightly different story. Uh, in terms of his communism, life is more important than architecture. What matters is to improve human beings. I've always thought to make, sought to make time for the broader view to feel indignation against inj injustice, exploitation, and the neglect of the underprivileged members of society. I do not know why I've always designed large public buildings. I try to make them beautiful and spectacular so that the poor can stop to look at them and be touched and enthused. I think that's the reason uh, for it being so spectacular on the inside and sort of underwhelming on the outside. You go down that ramp uh, and into the building. People have talked about how mass is a more perplexing experience in this cathedral because it is so incredibly light. Uh, you have to remember that we're in the middle of Brazil here, 
and this is almost entirely glass. The sun comes into this thing, and people say it's very difficult to photograph as well because of that, uh, because the whole thing is just bathed in light. Uh, I mentioned again in terms of uh, just sort of the equality, these are all relatively new, all these pews. Originally it would have just had standard chairs in there that you could have moved. There are also pictures of there just being sort of stools around, only a couple of them. Uh, this has sort of changed over time. But I think the most defining characteristic that you would all agree is probably the ceiling, uh, definitely, of the cathedral. You can see it again from the outside there. And I think that comes from sort of Oscar Niemeyer's larger world view. If he doesn't believe in God, what does he believe? Uh, and I think he sums it up here in a couple quotes. The day man understands that he is a part of nature, brother to the insects of the earth, the birds of the sky, and the fish of the sea, is the day he will understand his own insignificance and become simpler, more realistic, more human, and more sympathetic. Uh, we absolutely need to look at the sky and feel how insignificant we are the offspring of nature. In the cathedral, I put some transparent spaces in the stained glass so that from the nave, the believers could imagine that out there, in the infinite spaces, the Lord would be waiting. Uh, and then at the end, he, uh, I talked about that curve. Niemeyer talks about how the curve makes up the whole universe. To him, the universe is not in straight lines. The universe is in the curve. And so I think that's why the whole cathedral is curved. There are almost no straight lines in this thing, with the exception of the floor, uh, and the platform there, uh, even that uh, sort of partition there is curved all the way around, uh, and that was put in a little bit later. And actually, talking about the transparent spaces in the ceiling, uh, you say, well, you know, it's stained, it's pretty, the blue, that was added in 1990. Uh, so if you can imagine, when Oscar designed this, that would have been totally clear all the way around, and you would have looked up and literally seen the sky, uh, sort of seen God, seen the universe, uh, as he said, waiting up there for you. Uh, it would have been a truly spectacular experience, uh, sort of independent of any religious affiliation or anything. Uh, so this is the cathedral today, again, uh, and sort of what happened with that? Why does it have a little bit more of a Catholic connotation? Well, the military government came in uh, in Brazil probably 10 years after the city of Brasilia was completed, and they weren't really interested in having an ecumenical uh, sort of cathedral uh, that was state-supported as it was when it was originally planned. And so the Catholic Church uh, took it over pretty fully, added the cross at the top, uh, put in the angels, incidentally, uh, put in pews, and made it much more traditional in that way. Uh, so it's not exactly as it was intended, but I do think sort of the general view happened. Um, in terms of you know, how much of that uh, went into the creation of this cathedral, there is a whole other side to this in which Oscar Niemeyer is influenced by earlier church design. There are uh, Greek cross plan churches that have similar layouts to this. They're circular. Uh, you have sort of Moorish uh, mosque designs that have similar patterns to the stained glass windows. But I do think you have to look at the man uh, in order to understand why this cathedral looks the way it does. Uh, and finally, there's a picture of him that was taken probably 10 years uh, before he died. They're actually restoring the cathedral. A lot of his buildings are being ripped down, uh, but as of a little bit before he died, they're restoring the whole thing, trying to bring it back uh, more toward what he would have liked. Uh, and I think that that's probably a good thing for the building. So, thank you.